A lot of you out there probably like C. A lot of you out there might also think it could use a little tune-up and a few more modern conventions. And then some of you are looking for a revolution, an entirely new way of thinking and programming in systems languages. C3 and Zig fall somewhere in between those two categories. And they do this in very different ways. Well, sort of. C3 tries to look and feel like C, just improved from its perspective. Cleaner syntax, guardrails where it matters, predictable behavior, and a toolchain that feels like modern software development instead of something from the late 80s. Zig, on the other hand, doesn't just want to patch C, it wants to absorb it, understand it, generate it, compile it, replace your build system, replace your libc, and do it with a philosophy of minimal runtime, explicit control, and a deep distrust of hidden behavior. Then again, C3 kind of is doing that too, really. In fact, there's a lot of similarity. Both languages claim they're fixing C's biggest problems. Both have passionate users and both are evolving incredibly quickly. So what is the difference between these languages, really? And which can fix C best if C even needs fixing at all? Before we compare C3 and Zig, it's worth remembering why so many languages keep trying to patch the holes C leaves behind. C3 has been around for a while, and for good reason. It's incredibly performant, and gives you a lot of control over the small details, and lets you build up powerful systems with an amazing amount of flexibility. However, that flexibility comes at a price. Anyone who has worked on medium or large scale projects in C knows the difficult parts. Header files that break easily, manual memory management with zero built-in safety rails by default, build systems cobbled together by hand, air handling scattered across return codes and global flags, undefined behavior lurking in the corners, foot guns around type conversions, and a lack of modern tooling. Some developers are fine with this because they grew up with it. In fact, some may even say it's a feature. For these devs, the issues with C are a skill issue. It's the developer's responsibility, not the language, to patch any issues and use discipline. New languages in attempting to defy this paradigm muddy the waters and bloat the software. For these folks, neither C3 nor Zig will convince them. But then there is the rest of you. Most people and companies today simply want fewer ways for a project to go off the rails, rather than have insane amounts of flexibility and ways of doing things. They want the control of C, but with saner defaults and a better developer experience. That's the shared mission of C3 and Zig. But their philosophies could not be more different-ish. Let's start with looking at each language at a high level. C3 describes itself as a small language designed to feel like C while fixing its roughest edges. The goal isn't to reinvent systems programming, the goal is to keep parts people like, the predictability, the ABI stability, the bare metal nature, and give developers a more modern toolbox. The core ideas behind C3 are straightforward. Add a real module system, have a build system that isn't hand-rolled for every project, use optionals instead of scattered error codes, have defer-based cleanup for predictable resource handling, and no go-to. We'll talk about uh, that omission later. C3 also then adds various small syntactic and algorithmic goodies, such as lightweight generics, slices, subtype check distinct types, and contracts. All this plus some gives you some really clean syntax. There's also better defaults for safety without rewriting everything. The end result is a language that feels familiar if you've spent years writing C, but removes a lot of the daily friction, which might also feel alien if you're the last group scowling at me. C3 is kind of like simplifying the manual transmission in a car and adding a lot of new features while removing some others. You might get a cleaner experience, that is somewhat familiar, but you might notice some things missing if they've been staring at you for years. That being said, C3 is actually not that revolutionary. It deliberately keeps the mental model of C, it keeps the compile model simple, it keeps the runtime non-existent, it keeps the ABI compatible enough that you can call C libraries without any ceremony, 
It just expects you to let go of some things. Again, we'll talk about how that might affect interop later. As long as you're going from a C base that has attempted to modernize with modern principles and are taking the migration process incrementally, C3 can be an excellent bridge for you with minimal culture shock. Zig is more ambitious. Some would say aggressively ambitious, but not so ambitious to have gotten the ire of C folks yet, unlike poor Rust. Rather than smoothing C's rough edges, Zig essentially attempts to grow beyond it and yet work with it. You can think of Zig as equal parts language, toolchain, cross-compilation, platform, and build system. If C3 is a refinement of something known, Zig tries to be an ecosystem in a box. Zig's central ideas include no hidden control flow, no undefined behavior that goes unaccounted for, and explicit memory management with optional allocators you can swap at will. Zig has a compile time language built directly into the language itself, plus a direct built-in C compiler that can replace Clang in many scenarios. It even has the ability to import C headers directly and use them as if they were Zig code. It has a build system written in Zig itself, replacing Make, CMake, Ninja, and others. And it has a standard library that avoids footguns by design, rather than tradition. Wait, 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 you say? You said that C3 was very different from Zig. This sounds really similar. And it even has C interop. Well, right, it actually is quite similar. But the devil's in the details, including the marketing. Zig doesn't shy away from complexity. It wants to give developers every tool possible to bend their system to their will. It's designed around the idea that C's biggest problems aren't just syntax. They're the patchwork of external tools, compilers, build systems, and libraries that grew around it over decades. Zig's answer is to unify all of that into one coherent system. Where C3 tries to refine C, Zig tries to supersede it. The deeper difference between C3 and Zig is philosophical. C3 says we can make C nicer, we can modernize it without breaking the mental model. Zig says C is too fragmented, we should rebuild the world on better foundations. Both are valid approaches. The question is which one aligns with what you want from a modern systems language. Let's zoom in and break down each major feature of these languages and figure out just that. First. Handling errors. Zig and C3 do approach this differently, and at the same time, not so much. C3 uses optionals and defer try patterns. Errors flow naturally through the type system. If a function may fail, it returns an optional. If you forget to unwrap it, the compiler reminds you. Defer allows cleanup to happen predictably, avoiding a lot of duplicated code and go to's. Zig uses explicit error enums, something like this. Every error function that might error must declare it. There are no exceptions, no hidden behavior. Every error must be handled or passed up the chain. That gives developers total visibility into failure paths, but the cognitive load is higher. You have to decide what to do with every error as you write the function, but there's a twist. Zig also has defer and error defer. This means you can get a very similar program flow to C3 using Zig. For teams that like having that kind of control over every detail, Zig's model is appealing. For teams that prefer something more lightweight, ergonomic, and somewhat more opinionated, C3 feels more natural. The build systems of these languages are both pretty modern and actually quite different. C3 has a simple built-in project format, project.json. You describe your files, dependencies, and flags. Then you run C3C build or C3C run. It's straightforward, it's structured, keeps everything in one place. Most importantly, it removes the need to cobble together make files or CMake lists just to get started. No magic, but also no reinvention of the universe. Zig's build system is its own language, literally Zig code. You write the build scripts with full access to the Zig language, meaning you can configure builds programmatically, generate files, orchestrate cross-compilation, embed assets, or create complex pipelines. It's powerful and actually quite familiar in some ways if you're used to the build scripts of C. But for some developers, it feels like a lot of machinery when all they want to do is compile a program. The trade-off is clear. 
Zig gives you ultimate control, C3 gives you convenience. It also has the difference of whether you want a build configuration in C3 or a build script in Zig. Neither C3 nor Zig tries it to be Rust. Yes, I know many of you are jumping for joy over this. Both maintain manual memory management, both keep you close to the hardware, but they reduce risk slightly differently. C3's approach includes stricter type checking, safer conversions, slices that know their length, contracts for runtime validation, and cleaner defaults that remove many of C's classic traps. Zig's approach leans into explicit memory ownership. No hidden heap usage, error unions, and even defer for failure paths, compile time execution for validation, and a strict stance against silent, undefined behavior. Zig's safety comes from transparency. If something could be dangerous, Zig forces you to acknowledge it. Both approaches reduce mistakes, but Zig demands more discipline from the developer. Before we continue, you may be noticing something here. The radical here, Zig, is starting to sound more like C than C3 is. That's one of the more ironic things about this. The supposedly incremental and C-like language diverges in some ways more than Zig does. But we're not done yet. There are still some interesting differences here that might change your minds. Let's see. One thing both have going for them is tooling. The Zig compiler can compile C and Zig, import C headers directly, cross-compile out of the box for dozens of targets, replace Clang in many cases, and provide a unified workflow for building entire tool chains. This is why many companies increasingly use Zig not necessarily as a language, but as a build orchestrator and cross-compiler. C3's tooling is more modest, but more focused. It doesn't try to be a platform. It just tries to make C-style development more pleasant. That said, it's very similar and can do some of what Zig does. Before we get to interoperability, there's another design decision that matters for anyone porting real-world C, the fate of GoTo. C3 intentionally removes GoTo. The reasoning is simple. Most uses of GoTo in C appear in error handling and cleanup patterns. Situations that C3 replaces with defer, defer try, and structured error propagation. Removing GoTo eliminates unstructured control flow, reducing cognitive load and making code easier to reason about. But it also means that porting messy C code sometimes requires rewriting the control structure instead of translating it literally. There's also maybe a case for keeping GoTo, but we won't get into that here. Let's just say its removal has been controversial, to say the least. That said, C3 does include break and continue, which do the same thing, but with some nice labeling added. With that, you can simulate some of your go-to sections, but you still won't be able to do a drop-in replacement, unfortunately. Zig takes essentially that approach as well. It doesn't expose a raw go-to, but it does provide labeled blocks, break, continue, and other structured tools like defer that can emulate most practical uses of go-to without enabling the footguns. Zig preserves enough flexibility to model C's behavior for interop but not so much that developers can introduce impossible to follow jump paths. This becomes especially relevant for interoperability. Zig can import C headers directly using C import. It can compile C files as part of your build. It understands C's ABI deeply. Zig can effectively act as a drop-in replacement for C compilers in many environments. C3 aims for ABI compatibility and straightforward FFI. You can call C code cleanly, and C code can call C3 code with minimal ceremony. But C3 doesn't import headers or parse them. You declare what you need manually. It's simple, predictable, and stable, but less automatic. Zig is better for deep integration with existing C projects. C3 is better for rewriting C code in a cleaner, safer style. Let's talk about performance, one of the biggest practical questions for systems developers and yet maybe less relevant than we think. Both C3 and Zig aim to match or beat the performance of C, but they take different paths to get there. Zig uses LLVM today as its primary backend. That means Zig can target a wide range of architectures with mature optimizations and code generation. 
on top of that, the Zig project is also developing its own custom self-hosted backend. The goal is to eventually reduce the dependency on LLVM, speed up compilation, and gain finer control over the output. LLVM gives Zig global optimizations and well-established instruction selection. The Zig backend promises compile time speed, predictable output, and more consistent tooling. C3 also uses LLVM as its backend, but C3 doesn't focus on rewriting the compiler pipeline or reinventing the backend. It simply relies on LLVM's decades of maturity for code gen and optimization. The goal is not to outperform Clang in every corner case, it's to offer predictability. When you write straightforward systems code in C3, you get performance that behaves like Optimize C. Where Zig leans into advanced compile time features and allocator abstractions that can influence performance depending on how they're used, C3 keeps the model simple. Fewer knobs, fewer traps, and fewer cases where compile time behavior subtly changes runtime speed. In other words, you can't really go wrong with either one in the performance department. The story so far with these two languages is this. Zig aims to give the developer maximal control even if that control comes with complexity. C3 aims to give the developer minimal surprises, even if that means fewer advanced features. So, where are these languages in terms of popularity and growth? As of 2025, both languages continue to evolve. But Zig undeniably has more visibility. It has more contributors, more funding, more ecosystem growth, and more general awareness. It has been used in game engines, embedded software, OS tooling, and cross-platform build systems. C3, meanwhile, is smaller, but it has been moving steadily, shipping regular releases, refining the spec, and gathering a following among developers who want something that feels like a natural-ish successor to C without Rust's learning curve or Zig's philosophical purity. The difference, to some extent, is who we're trying to please here. Zig is trying to reshape the ecosystem, but around something that ironically feels much more like traditional C. C3 is trying to modernize experience, even if its evolution is leaving behind some perceived vestigial appendages. And oh boy, do some C developers like those appendages. Both languages address C's shortcomings, but they fix different things. So who is really fixing C, and in the best way? It depends on what you believe C's biggest problem actually is. If you think C's main flaw is its day-to-day -day ergonomics. C3 is the closest thing to a modern IC, but it had to make some cuts to get there. If you think C's biggest flaw is the decades of scattered tooling surrounding it, Zig is the more transformative yet conservative answer. It is surprisingly much more C-like than C3 even claims to be. If you think C needs both safety and tools, you can't really go too wrong with either language, but each has the trade-offs I mentioned previously. C3 and Zig aren't competitors in the conventional sense, they're two different interpretations of the same problem. Both are valuable, both are evolving, and both will probably play important roles in the next generation of systems programming. Thanks for watching! So, what do you think? Do you think that Zig is actually the true C fixer slash successor? Do you think I mischaracterize C3 as a charlatan C? Or do you think neither is really the right answer here? Leave your comments below. And if you found this video to be a valuable comparison and breakdown, do like and subscribe for more Techie Talk from the Techie Shop. If you like this video, watch this video here for more Tech Talk.